before all other human species died out and Homo sapiens took its place as king of the hominins. Earth was a bit like the Lord of the Rings, a place where different, intelligent, human-like beings roamed around, encountered each other, and fought, loved, and even died together. Scientists are still working on figuring out exactly how many species of ancient humans have occupied the Earth, and as genetic technology improves, new family members are increasingly being added to the hominin family tree. Time to make room for one more, the superarchaics. Scientists announced the discovery of this new group of ancient humans, and added another plot twist to our own origin story. Ancient human history is stuffed with revisions, additions, and differing opinions. The popular version goes like this, around 70,000 years ago, but it could have been much earlier, Homo sapiens left Africa, migrated to Eurasia, met and interbred Neanderthals and Denisovans, and eventually replaced them. But scientists tell a different version of the story. In this new tale, a similar process had occurred long before Homo sapiens made their mark. This version goes like this. Around 700,000 years ago, the ancestors of Neanderthals and Denisovans expanded from Africa to Eurasia, met and interbred with a group of ancient humans already there, replaced them, and then separated into their respective subpopulations. We modern humans were relatively late to the party. The researchers call this group of indigenous Europeans the superarchaics. They would have been the first wave of ancient humans to enter Eurasia, around 2 million years ago. To do the study, the scientists use a tool to trace the signal of these ancient human species in DNA. The tool allows scientists to look farther back into human lineage than previously possible. In the study, the researchers examined genomes representing populations of English, French, and the Yoruban people, an African ethnic group that inhabits Western Africa. They then applied the same statistical analysis to several archaic genomes, the Altai Neanderthal genome, the Balkan Neanderthal genome, and the Denisovan genome. They also used chimpanzee and gorilla reference genomes as examples of ancestral alleles. The results point to what may be the earliest known ancient human interbreeding event, that between the superarchaics, Neanderthals and Denisovans. These two groups may also be very distantly related, unlike, for example, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, which were closely related and mated together relatively frequently. Evidence of this ancient interbreeding can be found in the genes of living people. There are at least two loci, a fixed position on a chromosome, in modern humans that appear to have alleles that originated in superarchaics, a haplotype at the OAS1 locus, which appears in Melanesian populations, and the EPAS1 locus among Tibetan populations. How these genetic signatures came to exist in living populations is a complex question. When it comes to OAS1, the fact that the haplotype is long indicates that it has only been in the Melanesian populations for about 25,000 years. But it also differs from other OAS1 haplotypes at many nucleotide sites, which indicates that it has been separated from other parts of the human genome for over 2 million years. It is possible that modern humans also interbred with superarchaics, but it is also possible that modern humans got superarchaics alleles by interbreeding with Denisovans or Neanderthals who had themselves interbred with superarchaics such as Homo heidelbergensis. According to the Bradshaw Foundation, Homo heidelbergensis is an extinct species which may be the direct ancestor of both Homo neanderthalensis in Europe and Homo sapiens. Likewise, it has been argued that Homo heidelbergensis and Homo antecessor are likely to be descended from Homo ergaster from Africa, based on the close morphology. However, because Homo heidelbergensis had a larger average brain capacity than modern humans and used advanced tools, it has achieved its own species classification. Homo heidelbergensis was taller and more robust than modern humans. The theory may be as controversial as it is complicated. Ultimately, the study presents a new timeline for the human habitation of Eurasia, and potentially a new member of the family tree, bringing us closer to a deeper understanding of our mysterious past. Indeed, scientists found evidence of ghost population of ancient humans. 
traces of the unknown ancestor emerged when researchers analyzed genomes from West African populations and found mysterious genes lurking in their DNA. Known as the Yoruba, these people are a West African ethnic group that mainly inhabits parts of Nigeria, Benin and Togo that constitute Yoruba land and constitute more than 46 million people in Africa. Intense heat and humidity destroy DNA, so ancient fossil DNA is rarely found on the continent humans came from. But researchers revealed that the genomes of living West Africans may hold clues to a mysterious, ancient hominin, a ghost human species that currently can't be identified. Scientists found evidence for a mysterious, ghost population of ancient humans that lived in Africa about half a million years ago and whose genes live on in people today. Traces of the unknown ancestor emerged when researchers analyzed genomes from West African populations and found that up to a fifth of their DNA appeared to have come from the missing relatives. Geneticists suspect that the ancestors of modern West Africans interbred with the yet-to-be-discovered archaic humans tens of thousands of years ago, much as ancient Europeans once mated with Neanderthals. In the West Africans we looked at, all have ancestry from this unknown archaic population. Unlike today, the world was once home to many related species or subspecies of human. And when they stumbled upon one another, mating was not out of the question. As a result, modern Europeans carry a smattering of Neanderthal genes, while indigenous Australians, Polynesians and Melanesians carry genes from Denisovans, another group of archaic humans. Previous studies have hinted that other ancient humans once roamed Africa, but without any fossils or DNA to pour over, researchers have struggled to learn more about them. Researchers examined the genomes of 405 West Africans currently living in Nigeria, Gambia, and Sierra Leone. The DNA was collected as part of the Thousand Genomes Project. They obtained genomes from four West African populations and used statistical techniques to work out whether an influx of genes from interbreeding was likely to have happened in the distant past. The analysis suggested that it had in every case. They compared these genomes to the genomes of Neanderthals and Denisovans using a novel method with an improved sensitivity to finding archaic genomes without a reference point. This method uses the fact that we have genomes from many present-day people, and identifies segments that look different from a typical modern human. The findings are far from definitive, but according to the scientists' best estimates, the ghost population split from the ancestors of Neanderthals and modern humans between 360,000 and 1 million years ago. The scientists went on to scour the African genomes for chunks of DNA that looked different to modern human genes. This allowed them to pull out sequences that most probably came from an ancient relative. By comparing these with genes from Neanderthals and Denisovans, they concluded that the DNA had to come from an unknown group of archaic humans. The analysis reveals a substantial contribution of archaic ancestry in shaping the gene pool of present-day West African populations. On average, some 2 to 19% of these populations' genetic ancestry came from an ancient human, the results suggest. This ancient predecessor likely diverged from our family tree before the split of Neanderthals and modern humans. The group of perhaps 20,000 individuals then bred with the ancestors of modern West Africans at some point in the past 124,000 years. But other explanations are possible. There may have been multiple waves of mating over many thousands of years. Or a number of different populations of so far unknown archaic human relatives. These genes may have entered the modern West African genome recently, or the process may have involved multiple populations of archaic humans, which mixed over generations, the researchers say. From the data, the most likely time interbreeding between our own species in West Africa and this ghost hominin would be around 43,000 years ago, with a fairly wide confidence interval. There just is not enough data to say for sure. The study assumes modern West Africans do not have any Neanderthal or Denisovan ancestry, but instead may include some other hominin as a part of their ancient history. It's a big assumption. Another study concludes that living Africans can have fragments of Neanderthal DNA, a result of Neanderthal human interbreeding and migration back to Africa. 
It's often difficult to obtain DNA from ancient fossils found in Africa, like this skull from the Rising Star Cave system. It is likely African populations have ancestry from both Neanderthals and from this other archaic population, which, according to this study, is not related to Neanderthals. The study concurs with previous research, which also suggests the presence of ghost hominins in the genetic material of modern-day Africans. In the study, researchers examined the saliva of people from sub-Saharan Africa, finding that the sample carried genetic evidence of an as-yet-unknown ancestor. While introgression from Neanderthals and Denisovans has been documented in modern humans outside Africa, the contribution of archaic hominins to the genetic variation of present-day Africans remains poorly understood. We provide complementary lines of evidence for archaic introgression into four West African populations. The researchers are now keen to delve into the ancient genes and work out what they do. One possibility is that West Africans retained the DNA because it helped them to survive and breed. The data add another layer of complexity to the story of human history. They also add to our growing understanding of which ancient human species' genetic signatures remain in present-day African genes, just as modern-day Europeans carry Neanderthal DNA. The hope is that this will lead to exploration of complex models of human history that account for these interactions. The fact that segments of archaic ancestry are present in African genomes leads us to wonder how archaic DNA is impacting human biology. It's an exciting moment because these studies open a window showing us that there is much more than we thought to learn about our ancestors. But actually knowing who those ancestors were, how they interacted, and where they existed is going to take fieldwork to find their fossil and archaeological remains. In a stunning reversal, Neanderthals, who were once considered uncivilized subhumans, were promoted to being human when it was revealed that modern Europeans have Neanderthal genes. The findings in Africa are proof that Homo sapiens absorbed different populations that lived around us, and that human history is not as simple as we previously thought. Anthropologists do not know what this African population may have been. It is tempting to speculate that it was the mysterious group known as the African Neanderthals. For every mystery there is someone, somewhere, who knows the truth. Perhaps that someone is watching. Perhaps it's you. But why did Homo sapiens end up taking over the planet, while Neanderthals and Denisovans eventually vanished? While there was probably no such thing as dating hundreds of thousands of years ago, when it was more of a find your mate and don't get eaten sort of thing, there is evidence that Homo sapiens interbred with other protohuman species in the distant past. Neanderthals were one of those species, and Denisovans were another. Scientists have now found that these groups gave us more of their DNA than we thought, and that some of us have genes from a mysterious ancestral hominid, possibly Homo erectus. There was only one way for that to happen. That is a great matter of speculation among both archaeologists and geneticists, could be disease, conquest, out-competition for scarce resources, or perhaps the modern humans simply absorbed them. There is little hard evidence. But the one thing that we can see, as geneticists, is that these Neanderthal and Denisovan populations had relatively low levels of genetic diversity, suggesting they may have been prone to genetic diseases and or particularly susceptible to infectious diseases. Hybridization of a species results in introgression, or the genetic exchange which occurs in interbreeding species. Super-archaic Afro-European humans migrated out of Africa to Eurasia about 50,000 years ago and interbred with the Neanderthal population there. This is the migration and subsequent genetic merging that is the most recognized example of such a phenomenon. What they found, using an updated ancestral recombination graph algorithm that they were already headed elsewhere much earlier, around 200,000 to 300,000 years ago. The algorithm also revealed interbreeding between mystery superarchaic ancestors with both Neanderthals and Denisovans before either of those species interbred with ancient Homo sapiens. Homo erectus is the most likely ancient relative of humans to be that ancestor. Now extinct except for fragments of DNA that show up in some modern human samples, 
These protohumans were the first Homo sapiens relatives that showed body proportions similar to what you see when you look in the mirror. Unlike earlier hominids, the arms and legs of Homo erectus had evolved to be shorter than its torso. They were also the first hominids believed to have migrated out of Africa into Arabia, or what some call Greater Africa. This strengthens the case for interbreeding with Denisovans and Neanderthals, especially Denisovans. That has to make you wonder. If you've ever taken a commercial DNA test and your results came back with a small percentage labeled unknown, could that be a connection to the mystery ancestor? Some of the commercial tests specifically look for Neanderthal ancestry. It is possible that super archaic ancestry, or ancestry from a highly divergent branch of Neanderthals or Denisovans, would be labeled unknown by a commercial test. The most common genetic transfers happened between Neanderthals and Denisovans, Neanderthals and ancient Homo sapiens, super archaic ancestors and ancient Homo sapiens who stayed in Africa, and super archaic ancestors and Denisovans. Alleles, or alternate versions of genes, shared by Denisovans and the mystery ancestor support superarchaic DNA making its way into the modern gene pool when that species interbred with Denisovans. Unfortunately, so did mutations. It appears that Neanderthals and Denisovans introduced deleterious mutations into modern human populations when they interbred with them. Many of these mutations gradually faded over time, but some undoubtedly persist. Interestingly, however, they could not find clear evidence of the reverse effect, of modern humans introducing deleterious mutations into Neanderthals through this interbreeding. It is possible, though, that we do not yet have enough sensitivity to detect this phenomenon. Even with an advanced algorithm, it still proved more difficult to identify when and where superarchaic human ancestors interbred with Denisovans than it was to find the same information about Neanderthal or Denisovan interbreeding with Homo sapiens. This is probably because no sequence exists for the genes of the superarchaic ancestor yet, and also because they have been broken over and over again by recombining with the genes of ancient humans and the other two hominid groups so many times. Will we ever really know who the superarchaic ghosts of our ancestors were? I think so, and don't be offended if someone calls you a caveman, because we all have cavemen in our family tree. Thanks for watching. Please check out these other videos or join us in the comment section. If you're not yet subscribed, please click that big red button now, so you don't miss any of our highly compelling videos. Thank you.